will be looking at what it means to be self motivated right. in your own relationship with God. Before I start, I just want to ask one question What do you want to see? change. Mm. But the thing is, I'm not going to help you answer what you do need to change. Okay. The thing is, okay. you already know what you want to see change. <coughs> the only thing is, why hasn't it changed? <coughs> Come on. And you know, one thing we're tempted of thinking is that change will come gradually. Give it time, give it a little bit of effort, maybe after 2023, it will change. But the truth is, when you say that, you are more in love with your own comfort mm -hmm. than actually changing. True. Have you grown comfortable in your life as a Christian? Mm. You say you've gotten used to having quiet times. Mm. You've gotten used to reading your Bible and praying in the morning. Well, great. Yet you fail to be more inspired with what you read. You say you've gotten used to inviting people to come to church. And yet many times you see you fail to change someone's life. Yeah. Right. You fail to actually make a friend mm -hmm. and that contact only just becomes simply a contact yeah. mm -hmm. and you will cool. lose touch with them in a month's time. Cool. You say you've gotten used to coming to church, great, yeah. but maybe you failed in actually connecting with God because wow. you didn't even have your quiet time that Sunday morning. Right. Wow. Come on. You know, when we get comfortable, that's where we stop dreaming big. Mm -hmm. That's where we stop doing more and digging deeper. Right. When things become comfortable, we stop giving our hearts. Right. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's become tradition to you. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in high school, and okay. um, you know, in the Philippines, mm -hmm. we wake up at 5.30, eat at 6 a.m., go to class at 6.30, wow. and have class at 7.30 up until 4 p.m. Every day, come in, come out. Every day, study, study out. <laughs> it, you talk to Shiny and Nikkei, and you, if they, if you ask them, how was Matthew like when he started studying the Bible? You'd imagine this guy who yeah. didn't want to do anything, that right. just wanted to uh -huh. sleep on his bed, and did not have any plans in his life. Right. Because that's who we become. Mm. After we get a comfortable life, guess what a lot of people out there say? My life, I just want to graduate. Right. I just want a job. Mm. I just want a family. I right. just want to survive. Yeah. And eventually you get old and what you say is, I just want to retire. Right. Oh, yeah, that's Is, are all those dreams the same dreams you have for your spiritual life? Right. Mm. I just want to get to heaven. I just want to baptize one person. Yeah. I just want to be a Bible talk member. Mm. Not a leader, mm. just a member. Right. What happened to people saying, I want to be in this mission team? Right. I want to go here, I want to go here, I want to plant churches. On, what happened to the person that says, I want to be a shepherd for God? On, bro. What happened to, I want to be an evangelist, mm. a women's ministry leader? Wow, come on. Come on. It all became stagnant. Come on, bro. Yet the only way to really want change in your life yeah. is to have your focus on God. Right. And not on how you want your life to be. Yeah. Preach. Come on. Second Corinthians seven verse ten and eleven it says, "Godly sorrow brings repentance that leads to salvation and leaves no regret. But worldly sorrow brings death. See what this godly sorrow has produced in you? What earnestness? What eagerness to clear yourselves? What indignation? What alarm? What longing? What concern? What readiness to see justice done?" At every point, you prove yourself to be innocent in this matter. Mm -hmm. True change is only two things. Mm. One, you feel so sorry to God because you are ungodly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And your love for God, these two things should move you to yeah. change. Come on. You know, many times we're just not motivated yeah. until we see how our lives affect other people. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. When we see other people's lives ruined because of us, dang. That's our motivation to change. Wow. That's facts. And I get that um, before I started dating the first time in my um, in, in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, God's been awesome to grant me, you know, my first relationship in the kingdom. Right. Yeah. But usually, when a brother pointed something out in my life, yeah, I would usually go, oh, yeah, sort it out. That's your problem. Wow. But when my my girlfriend in the past said, hey, we need to bring this up, you'd see how sorrowful I was. Mm. Wow. I would cry. 
I'd look through scripture, I would pray hours and hours and hours on end because I love that person. Wow. And I genuinely wanted to change. Wow, come on. In the same way, our motivations need to be more than just ourselves. Come on. Mm. And it needs to be linked with our relationship with God. Yeah. yeah. If we were to need, if we were to change yeah. constantly. Come yeah. on. Second Timothy verse 1 to 7, it reads, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, mm -hmm. but gives us power, yeah. love, and self-discipline. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Come bro. You know, in your New Year's resolution, it's one month away. True. In reality, it is That's one true. month away. Right. That's true. Many times we can be afraid of writing things down on those New Year's resolutions. Yeah. Why? <laughs> because we are afraid. Oh, what yeah. if I don't get that done? Right. Mm -hmm. What would people think if I fail in the things I want to change? Mm. Wow. Let's be honest. Mm. You can't change, but God can. Wow, come on. Come on. Very true. The truth is, when we became Christian, did we really think that we can become Christian by ourselves? No. Absolutely not. We were like, God, I know you will work through me. Yeah. Especially in the times of trouble. Yeah. Right. In the same way in your in your fight to be godly, God will work through you more than you think you will work for yourself. True. Yeah. Right. Come on. And so throughout the study, actually, um, I have the sermon notes sent out yeah. because all of it is just questions. Right. Why? Because tomorrow in your quiet times, go through them. Actually answer it. Come on. Um, when someone is training you, in a physical sport. Right. Someone is actually telling you to command, do this, run this, um, for this long, how many reps, etc., etc. But right. when you're training yourself to be godly, yeah. nobody's gonna tell you what to do. Yeah. Yeah. You need to tell yourself right. what you need to change. True. These questions will help you know what you need to change mm -hmm. and practically go change them. Mm -hmm. right. So the title of this sermon, therefore, is Training Yourselves to Be Godly. Yeah. Point number one, taking responsibility for our own spiritual growth. Right. Come on. Come on. You know, the purpose of this sermon is to show you that your spirituality, that your spiritual relationship with God yeah. is on you. True. Not yeah. she. Yeah. Uh -uh. Not Nikkei. Right. Not no. Shaw. No. And not me. Come on. So to a certain extent, I'm going, yeah, I'm grateful. But you need to work on it. Your own. Yeah. You know, God wants you to take full responsibility of where you are right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can mature and you can be molded by God. Come on. Right. Philippians 2, verse 12 to 13, it says, Therefore, my dear brother, dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Come on. So just ask yourself these questions. Mm -hmm. Who's responsible for your, for your salvation, your spiritual growth? Right. What makes us feel like it's other people's responsibility? Mm. Sometimes when we get unspiritual, we think it's other people's mm -hmm. Right. You have to ask yourself, why do you think that? Mm. What today are you blaming Right. On your unspirituality, Come on, bro. your Come lack on. of love for God. Come on. Yeah. So many times it's our circumstance. Yeah. You don't understand. My job and my studies make me unspiritual. Wow. Okay. You know how weird it sounds. Right. Yeah, it's not that weird. Come you don't understand other people, brothers, sisters. Oh no, no, no. Leaders. Oh. They're making me unspiritual. What? Mm. Or even the world, my campus. Is preventing me from sharing because they're unfaithful they don't they're not nice to me so I can't evangelize right or even your own workplace mm -hmm. is that stopping you from being spiritual come on yeah but let's be honest a spiritual person put them in a hard situation and yeah. they will crank yeah yeah that's why I want to lift up Nikki let me give you this scenario she was yeah. trapped in Austria that's true. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Better <laughs> word for it. Austria. In Austria, in um, in the in Europe. Mm -hmm. And That's so she was trapped there, and she didn't really have a situation to get out no, at that moment. Mm -hmm. But she was faithful. She was like, you know, what? Instagram. Yeah. One of I'm the hardest cyber. ways to evangelize <laughs> and to I'm save souls. Cyber. Let's do it. Let, let's do whatever I can. Wow. Means mail in. Wow. 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 
That oh, man. So the, here's, here's the issue now. Yeah. You have someone that's not even in Hong Kong yeah. reach out to someone who's not even in Hong Kong. Oh, that's right. Right. Oh, that's true. Someone in CT, that's CT2, tough. Yeah. come and study the Bible. So how would that work? Come on. Come, bro. But I can assure you, Nikki was like, you know what? This, this girl wants to be a disciple. Right. I yeah. will make everything mm. and everything to help her out. Wow. Well, Connects her to um, Charlotte in CT2. Yeah, come on. Takes her shopping, does you know, and then comes yeah. over to Paul Yu. That's where yeah. we take over and do the Bible study. Right. And now she's here. Yes. Wow. Oh my oh my God. God. Oh my no situation yeah. can ever prove yeah. one spiritual. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's your own character yeah. at the end of the day. You know, what are the consequences of us looking to others versus ourselves to be responsible for our salvation mm -hmm. and spiritual growth? Right. When you rely on other people. For your spirituality mm -hmm. is what bitterness. Right. Wow. No, bro. Cool. They will, they will offend you yeah. one way or another. Mm. Weakness spiritually. When they're not doing well in their spiritual life, you're right. not doing well either. Right. Yeah. No, bro. Criticalness that yeah. defiles a lot of people. Yeah. You will become critical Very because true. of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sadly, this has actually gotten a lot of people to fall away. Yeah. Mm. No, bro. Um, your spirituality is based between you and God. Yep. Not you, God, plus one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus two. Um, plus bro. three. No. Mm -hmm. It's you and God. That's true. And I remember it being in the Philippines. After I became a disciple, I actually went for a summer to the Philippines. And yeah. I joined, you know, the campus ministry. Come on. And um, immediately I was, um, I was <laughs> immediately friends with uh, four other brothers. Okay. And we call ourselves the F4. Oh my oh, gosh, no. 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 Not, not kidding, not kidding. Oh. And that's like, I think a Taiwanese boy group. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Not um, the reason being because all of them are also like fake Filipinos like me. Oh, oh <laughs> fake four, fake four. Yeah, and so all of them are Filipinos. Um, and to the point we've been so friends that um, at the end, uh, actually on my birthday, they sent me a video reel of them doing a dance oh, for my birthday present. Wow, cool. And so that's really encouraging. Um, but the thing is though, mm. after, um, after I came back to Hong Kong, one of them fell away, mm. and two of them came. Wow. wow. And it shows that even though you have good relationships, yeah. right. if their relationship with God isn't strong, yeah. Yeah. Oof, it would all crumble down. Come bro. Wow, come on bro. Come on, bro. Okay. Ultimately, God puts the responsibility to work out your salvation yeah. on us and not other people. Yeah. When you stop blaming other things, other people, and start to work on yourself, God works in you and helps you live out your purpose. Come on. God commands you to crave spiritually. In 1 Peter 2 verse 2, 3, it says, Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tested that the Lord is good. You know, think about it. What examples in your own life can you describe to be a craving mentality? Right. Oh, wow. Well, okay. Just think about when was the last time you craved something? Mm. Yeah. And you know, I think about Chi craving oh, KFC. Mm -hmm. oh, every day, all day. If he wants KFC, mm. the whole Bible talk will mm. just go. Yeah. That's a fact. Mm -hmm. How about hot other stuff. things? Come on. And also hot stuff. But other things, like, let's be honest, we crave a lot of things. Right. Yeah. A while ago in the good news, let's be honest here. Who wanted to feel lifted up? I wanted to feel lifted up. Yeah, all of us. Come on, when we man. have good news, we like even the sermon. Right. We go through our sermon going, I want to be lifted up. Maybe, right. maybe I'll be used as Today's an example. Day, you know? <laughs> we want praise. Come on. And that's normal. Come on, we man. crave to get dating, to get married. Mm. We mm. crave baptism. That's normal. That's good. But the thing is, in the things that you've been craving in your life, mm -hmm. do you have the same craving in your spiritual life? Wow, come on, bro. Come on, bro. Yeah. You come can on. want a lot of things, yeah. but here's the thing. If you have spiritual cravings, what have you been doing about it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or if it's just a good idea, then it'll remain a good idea. Yeah. Come on, bro. You know, if you don't know if you don't know why you don't have any cravings at all, yeah. figure it out. Wow, well, come on. Come on bro. Because if you are in the kingdom and you go, I'm okay, I don't need anything, mm. there's an issue. Yeah. yeah. It's like you going to the gym and going, I'm okay, I'll just sit by the water, water cooler. <laughs> Why did oh, you even oh. go in the first place? Right. Oh, oh, bro. Oh. And I, I always appreciate Chi for this. Come on, Chi. Um, before I went to Sydney, 
he actually had to sit down with me and mm. going, hey bro, you are not the Elisha to my Elijah. You are not learning from mm. the relationship that I have with you. Mm. Right. And for so long, that's true. I've been under chief for so long, I've stopped wanting to learn. Wow. Mm. I've stopped wanting to understand how he works, right. how he thinks, how he does the ministry. Right. And so he sat me down going, you gotta fix this. Mm. I go in all that prayer, go fix it. Mm. If you go to Sydney, and you're gonna go under Joe right. like this, mm. you won't survive. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so I did, and I'm very grateful. Right. And a lot of people say that I've actually been wanting to learn from Joe. I, I have to thank Chief for that. Wow, come on, Chief. Because really, right. it's not me. If I came with that mentality, I would be whacked. Yeah. And I won't be standing in front of you today. Come on, bro. Mm. How about for you? Write down three things. Three things that you've been craving spiritually what you want and right. go change it starting tomorrow right. not next week no not next year tomorrow mm. point number two decide you know what areas of your life are you looking to train yourself to be godly in come on first timothy 4 verse 12 it says don't let anyone look down on you because you are young right but set an example for the believers in speech in conduct in love in faith and in purity. Right. Paul here calls Timothy as a at a young spiritual age yeah. to set an example. Wow. Let's be honest. Most of us here are already spiritually old. Yeah. So we need to move beyond that. So what do you need to change in? It says here speech, conduct, love, faith, and purity. Right. Well, come are on. these things you are still working on? Mm. How about in speech? How is your speaking? Right. How is your public speaking? Come on. You know, it's been a joy being able to just chuck new brothers and sisters on stage. Yeah. yeah. And seeing how well they actually, how well they do. Right. Yeah, and I've been really proud of Martin. I mean, yeah. Like, yeah. that's something else. Come on, Martin. But do you need to be prompted to put up there to change how you speak? To change how you speak with visitors and friends to study the Bible? Come on. You know, when focusing on a lot of things, you will get overwhelmed. True. Mm. And you focus on A, B, C, D, E. Okay, uh, uh, okay, and then you get into a depression. But I want to encourage you guys. Pick yeah. one thing. Ask yourself these questions. What do I think God wants to work on me the most right, yeah. Yeah. right now? Mm. And you know, it's very obvious in your life when God is trying to pull you closer to like one topic. Yeah. Maybe you're reading the quiet. You're reading the Bible, and you go, "Oh, loving other people." Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, okay. I think that's what God is trying to say. Mm -hmm. And then your Bible discussion on that Wednesday is about loving people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I don't know what you're trying to say. God. Midweek comes up, and the sermon is about loving brothers and sisters. You yeah. go, "All right, God, chance." Okay, not yeah. chance. <laughs> and then Sunday comes and then th your discipling, your mentoring time comes and they're just like, you gotta change man, you gotta love, you gotta love. <laughs> and you go, God, all right, I understand what you're trying to tell me. Yeah. I'm not sure if you feel that way, but that's how, that's how God works. Yeah, come so on. many times. You know, what has God been reminding you to change? Maybe just not recently. Maybe God's been telling you for a year. Right. And you're just not listening. Yeah. Or maybe it's recent. What is the one thing in your life, when you change it, will radically change and make a difference in the life that you have now? You know, I put down one to five, write down five different of these things. Tell your mentor, tell your disciple, hey, next year, or even by the end of this year, I want to change in these things. If you guys have nothing to think about, I'll, let me give you some examples. Do you need to change in your prayer life? In your Bible study? Are they stale? Do they need work? In your evangelism, I really do appreciate, and I want to lift up Ash. Yo, come on, Ash. Let me tell you, this guy, yeah. when I was in Sydney, people have been telling me this guy doesn't want to evangelize at all. <laughs> and that's the one thing, you know, he was trying to work his own side. You look, you look at him today, he's not the same guy. Yesterday we were evangelizing, and we were talking to and making some friends, and we met a guy from Sichuan, okay. where he's from. Oh, wow. And you would not see him the same person. He's oh. hugging this guy or like, ah, shoulder man. Ah, ah. <laughs> wow. Completely different. Like, Tapping him like, yeah, Thursday, come join us. Nigeria. Wednesday, come find us. He's a different man. Nigeria. Wow. 
And even with the, with the person I was talking about, Jason. Yeah, we're studying the Bible with him tomorrow. And he's wow. pumped to be in this study. Wow, come on, Ash. You know, do you need to change your courage, your approach, right. your heart, your mm. evangelize? Speak. Yeah. How about your purity, right. your finances, mm. or lack of it, or lack of saving? Amen, I still need to change in that aspect. Come on, bro. In your friendships, or the lack of it. Mm. Eating habits and health, lift up yeah. kit for that. Come yeah, on. Okay. Your job, your right. studies, your control of your own emotions, right. your marriage, your love life, mm. or the lack of it. Amen. I'm repenting. Come on. Um, Come on. Your ability to lead Bible studies yeah. or Bible discussions. Mm. You know, make sure to pick one thing. In the next five years, if you've just picked five of these different things, you will not be the same person. I can right. guarantee you that. Mm. If you stand up here and go, you know, I'm this today, five years later you go, I know how to raise special. I know how to have savings. Wow. I know how to have a family. Okay. I know how to lead people to God. Oh, wow. I know how to have good friends. So Look at my Facebook. Yeah. You go, this has been a great five years. Mm -hmm. And I'm more motivated to make yeah. more disciples. Oh, cool. Let's keep going. Point number three. Yeah. Nothing changes unless you get radical about it. Come on, come on, Matthew. The thing is, the big question you must be asking is, how radical is radical? Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, let's see what Jesus has to say, all right? Yeah, not me, not my opinion. Right. Matthew 5, verse 29 to 30, it says, If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out yeah. and yeah. throw it away. Um, it is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if your right hand causes you to stumble, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than yeah. for your whole body to go right. to hell. Um, bro. If you were still asking the question, how radical is too radical? Yeah. Most of the time, you're not radical enough. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because you're still thinking about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're still thinking about the limits. Your heart is not fully 100%. Mm -hmm. God calls us to be extremely radical. Why? Because that's the only way to change. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to lift up a couple of brothers in the Philippines. Um, I remember I was locked. We were locked out of the house yeah, for like right. two hours. <laughs> um, and this guy who lives with me just shared his life and his conversion with me. Oh wow! And he used to be a um, he used to be a region leader for his old church. Right. Big family man. Where Fili Filipinos are very very yeah. big family men. Yeah, they are. And for two hours, he was just sharing. You know what? I gave up a lot of things. Right. But because I understand, I saw the kingdom. He came to the conference and he was like, there are thousands of thousands of disciples that yep. want to love God with all of their hearts. Yeah. Sign me up. He put all of his cards down. I am not letting anything step in my way of God. Mm. He became a Christian. He stepped away from his church, from that job, from his family who is in that church. Yeah. He's like, you know what? I dream of being an evangelist. Wow. Right. I dream of being a region leader. Right. Why? Because... I know how much God has loved me. Right. And I will not, even if it's one thing, hold on to it. Come on, bro. In the same way, what are you still unwilling to give up? Right. That's the reason why you're not radical. Come on, bro. Is it sleep? <laughs> Is it anything? Right. That's what's stopping you. Come on, bro. With God. You know, people fail to change because they fail to understand the actual price of change. Yeah, come on. They want the idea of change. It feels good. But they hate the idea of the price. Right. Of what it would take. Now, let's look at the scripture. 1 yeah, Corinthians 9, verse 25 to 27. It says, everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. Yeah. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Mm. Therefore, I do not run like something running, a someone ra running aimlessly. Mm. Yeah. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I preach to others, I myself will not be disqualified wow. for the prize. Yeah. Yeah. The attitude of change requires all of these things. Yeah. It requires a strict mindset, a schedule of sorts. Mm. Yeah. And that's why I want, uh, I keep lifting up Nikkei because Nikkei is awesome. Nikkei yeah. is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> if you look at Nikkei's schedule, yeah. You, I don't even have yeah. to explain. She wakes up early, sleeps late, 
but she continues to give yeah. as an usher, as a Bible talk leader, yeah. as yeah. disciples, yeah. plural, and as a PhD student. <laughs> of cancer, Curry not cancer. a big thing. She's I know it cancer. is a big thing. I'm sorry, <laughs> it is a very big thing. Is it curing cancer? Yeah. Cancer. So she handles yeah. all these things <laughs> at the same time being a disciple. And you go, oh yeah, oh, that's that's amazing. That's all. Mm. And you think about it, if you have the same schedule as her, oh. how would your life be different? Mm. Yeah, yeah, hands down. You already get the point. <laughs> you pray more. But I also want to lift up Joe. Um, because if you guys don't know, Joe is um, our world sector leader. He's the guy leading the churches in China, Australia, and over here. Um, if you guys don't know, him, well, and for you guys, maybe he's just a big spiritual giant. He planted churches. He's an awesome guy. But the thing is, his ability to outwork all of us is amazing. Is amazing, but it's simply a fact of scheduling. Yeah, I attached a small little picture of his actual schedule. And think about it, all of us, let's be honest, don't even sleep more than, I'm sorry, we sleep less than eight hours. Yeah, absolutely. He hours. sleeps eight hours. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I know, it's really crazy. Yeah. He has, and in this schedule, you see, he has his quiet time at six to seven. Yeah. He prays, W slash O is workout. Yes, mm. he works out. Yeah. He can most probably outbeat you in a push-up competition. Yeah, mm. which he did. In which a lot of people did. <laughs> and so uh, in the schedule, you see the free schedule and the free slots. That's where he goes and studies the Bible. Mm, wow. And you go, how does he outwork us? Well, he just has a good discipline. Yeah. He has a good schedule that he fixes every single day. Yeah. yeah. You know, what else is needed? You need training, repeated actions until you achieve a result. Yeah, Hebrews 5 verse yeah. 14. It says, but solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. Mm. You need to have goals. Know what you're aiming for. Know what you want. Philippians 3, verse 13 to 14. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead. Wow. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Mm. Let me ask you this. Have you actually planned for your new year? Mm. I know I haven't, but I do know that it's not going to be something I'm doing by myself. Mm -hmm. It's something I'm doing with God. Yeah, come on. Why? Because God is the one leading me. Right. True. The goals that I'm going to set, let's be honest, they're not going to be the same thing six months later. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What does God want to see me in the next year? Yeah. True. You need rigorous discipline of your body. Romans 8 verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by his spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. Yeah. You need to master your emotions, yeah. making them a slave so that you're not a slave to your emotions. Mm -hmm. Then he said to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves mm -hmm. and take up their cross daily mm -hmm. and follow me. Yeah. Who, who, or whoever wants to be my disciple, or whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will save it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, after you live an incredible long life of godliness, you need to make sure that you are still a disciple. Yeah. That you have not disqualified heaven. Wow. Come First on. Peter 1 9 it says, For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Right. And just going to a landing, okay, we talked about all these things. What should I do? What mentality should I have? Come on. Let's go to practicals now, shall we? Wow, come on. So point come four. On. Set practicals. If a goal doesn't have a plan, it remains a dream. Yeah. You yeah. will sit exactly here, or maybe in a different place. You will sit. You will have the same spiritual life and character yeah. one year from now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Where many other disciples have gone to plant churches, mm -hmm. gone to have families, mm -hmm. you will be sitting in the same place. Mm -hmm. So, in your life, get plans. Come on. What are the things? Get a mentor. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Now. Yeah, yeah. come on. It says in Ephesians 4, 11 to 15, it says, So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and teachers to equip his people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Right. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there mm -hmm. by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people 
in their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Right. If you could have changed, mm -hmm. <laughs> you would have already changed. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that you haven't changed shows you haven't changed a thing. Yeah. Many times we're tempted to feel that, you know, having a mentor, having someone to be accountable for you right. is weird <laughs> and uh, uncomfortable. Wow. Yeah. Get over it. Yes. It should be. Yeah. Yep. That's the um, And, you know, I love Queenie. So me and Queenie have been doing this thing, you know, we're like, okay, we're trying to lose weight, guys. Yeah. 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 So we're like, every Monday, we're going to send each other like our weight and then our goals. Wow. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I've, I've been it's failing at it. Yeah, Amen. It. Yeah. Um, but last Friday, you know, and th this is the thing that I love about mentoring relationships. Yeah. It's uncomfortable, but it's motivating. Yeah. Bible, uh, Friday comes and she was like, did you exercise? <laughs> Come on, Queenie. No, I was like, <laughs> and then she was like sending me pictures of like fat cats. Oh my god. And she's like, oh, if you don't exercise, this will be wow. you. Oh my god. Oh my god. That's crazy. <laughs> and inside of me, I was like, oh my gosh. I know it's true. Right. Yeah. But I, what I took out of that, you know, that's true. Mm -hmm. I need to go and change. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy that someone is changing with me. Mm -hmm. Come on. If you do it by yourself, it's just it's discouraging. Mm -hmm. yes. And you probably didn't change at all. Yeah. That's true. Oh, bro. God gave us leaders not to just have someone to you know talk to or someone to overrule us, mm -hmm. but they're here to help us change, yeah. grow and mature. True. You know, most of us think that change comes after repeated effort. I'm just gonna do the same thing again and again and again and again, hoping things will change. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Yeah. yeah. Something has to change. Right. You know, for yourself, don't decide to pray more. Decide to have someone to pray with. Mm -hmm. Look for two people, pray with them. Yeah. Don't just join a gym. Get a personal trainer. Get yeah. a workout partner, someone yeah. that would want to help you work out to get fit. Come on. You know, I, I've been telling a lot of people, hey, I've been running, I've been running, I have this small app yeah. that, that helps me and things like that. Oh, and even, um, it's just very encouraging to have people around me. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the persons we're sitting by was Shep, hey y'all. Mm. He's like, yeah, you know, I run as well, let's go. Yeah. I ran with him for like 30 minutes and I got exhausted. But in those 30 minutes walking back, Come I got to know his life. Yeah. I get to be healthy, change my own life, wow. and still change the lives of other people. Come on. That's the beauty of doing things together. Yeah. Don't just reread the Bible. Mm -hmm. Find someone that wants to reread it with you. Yeah. Keep you accountable. Right. Do you want to increase your Bible knowledge? There's ICCM. Mm -hmm. That's true. And you know, I, I really want to lift up um, even Maylin and Kid. Yeah. I think a couple, I think months ago, they were like, hey, can I have the notes of ICC? Yeah. Let's wow. Go. And it shows their heart that they want to so learn more. Yeah. Because I remember that's how I started. Yeah. I was like, I'm really curious, what's this ICCM thing? Send me the notes, I want to learn. And that's how I did get into ICCM, and now I graduated. Come on. Yay. Ultimately, you know, with being godly, <clears throat> never give up. Right. Yeah. Um, Second Thessalonians 1, verse 3 to 4. It says, we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters. And rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. And the love all of you have for one another is increasing. Right. Therefore, among God's churches, we boast about your perseverance yeah. and faith in all the persecutions and trials you are enduring. Wow. Come on. Know, that the, know that the road to victory is paved by challenges. Right. Yeah. Defeat. Yeah. Doubt and worries. Yeah. Come on. Small ones or really, really big ones. Sure. Sure. So it's super normal if you fail. Mm -hmm. The most important thing, just never give up. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. Come on. Because the truth is, winners never quit, and quitters never win. Yeah. Winners, they go. I just need to win one more time. True. Mm -hmm. They need to pick themselves one more time yeah. mm -hmm. than the number of times they've fallen down. That is true. true. They've already won. That is yeah. true. And at the end of the day, God will not quit on you. Mm -mm. So why should you give up? No, I'm wrong. What is amazing is that you look at your own life. <coughs> Me and Nick, we look at our own conversions. We're like eight months plus. God has never given up on us. No. So we should no. never give up on the goals God has set for us. Okay. I, look at, I look at even Jeff. Wow, come on, come on, Jeff. 
Um, we were just joking around and we were looking at his conversion and how he got and we became a disciple. Come on, and I have to admit, I failed a lot. I failed a lot to convert him. Why? Because me and Nicole first met him and he was like, great, he's keen. I got his WeChat, I texted him once, three months passed. I never followed up with him again. That's absolutely my fault. That is absolutely my fault. I failed to follow up. Um, and then afterwards, we bumped again in the home home dorms, and I didn't even recognize that was him. Right. I got his reach. I, I, I was talking to him. He was like, "Hey, I'm actually studying the Bible with this other guy." Right. And I'm like, "Okay, who's this other guy?" I ask more, and I realized that's me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so bro. I'm, I'm actually going against myself <laughs> to a certain extent. But think about it. If I want to know what it in the wrong the circumstance, I wouldn't have continued. Yeah. Alright, all right, this guy's not interested. I'll move on. <laughs> but God allowed me to say and keep talking to him. Oh my. After all that, we studied the Bible, mm. and then he ran away because he didn't want to give um, up one of his exchange programs. Yeah, come on. And by God's grace, we meet him again on the <laughs> same bridge. Come on. And because of COVID, his him. exchange that he wanted he wanted to go was actually canceled. Ha, oh, <laughs> God is, and so God is working. And um, you know, he was a bit saddened a bit, so I noticed something like, how's it going? You know, and we studied the Bible again and he wanted to be excited. But wow, I think about it this way. I failed a lot. Yeah. But God kept giving him another chance. Wow. Yeah. Another chance. Yeah. And another chance. Yeah. So the truth Come is on. don't give up. Yeah. God's working with you here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So never ever quit. Right. Come, on. Come on. And just the last point here. Yeah. The most important thing. Pray lots. Yes. And lots. And lots. And lots. Yeah. Philippians 1, 9 to 11 says, And this is my prayer that your love may abound more and more yeah. in knowledge and depth of insight. So that you may be able to discern what is best. Yeah. And may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Right. Mm-hmm. Filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. To the glory and praise of God. Right. Come on. Do your prayers influence you? Yeah. Come on, bro. Or are they just prayers? Mm. They're just the thing that you do at 6, 7 a.m. Mm. Does your life affect your prayers? Do your mm-hmm. worries affect your prayers? Right? Wow. Or do your prayers affect your worries oh, come on. and doubts? You know, what are your personal feelings towards this statement? Your righteousness and your prayers do make a difference. Right. Do you believe that? Um, bro. And do you act like it? You know, some suggestions, you know, you can even make a prayer list, a prayer book. You know, keep a journal for your prayer time so that you can remind yourself of the things you're focusing on and growing in. Mm-hmm. Set two or three times to pray with other people so that they will make you grow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, just to conclude, you know, the title of today's sermon is Training Yourself to Be Godly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are all here fighting for our own selves, at the same time fighting for other people. But you need to be self-motivated here. You need to know that it is your responsibility for your own spiritual growth. You you need to decide what areas of your life you're looking to train yourself to be godly in. No one's going to decide that for you. Get radical, as nothing changes unless you get radical about it. If you think it's just a little problem, it will stay a little problem. Mm. And it won't change it. Yeah, and ultimately, set practical. Don't leave this room. Don't leave the midweek venue without making things that you want to change. Yeah, come on. She just said a lot of things that will change in this church. Right. Yeah. And I'm excited to see you guys change with that. To see more people come. And mm. to see your spiritual life grow. And to God be the glory. Wow. Wow. Wow.